Did you know, for example, 18% of Brits prefer gardening to spending intimate time with their partner? I say, give me a pair of gloves and a bottle of miracle Grow, and I'm ready for either. <laughs> One in three adults believe in angels, and to those people I say, would you like to buy some magic beans? <laughs> and 98% of people say, come on, you two. <laughs> Let's get started. Sean, what have people been talking about? Well, personally, I, I think I've lost count this week the number of times people have, mostly strangers, have turned to me and said, uh, oh, you're hot, isn't it? <laughs> oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, I'm so oh. hot. And I think, yeah, I know. I'm standing next to you. <laughs> in fact, that's the only thing we've got in common. <laughs> We're hot. <laughs> I mean, I said, I think to myself, like, if they said, look, eagle, I'd be interested. <laughs> There goes Vinnie Jones on a penny farthing. <laughs> then they go, oh, are you, oh, I'm very, are you close? Do you find it close? No, I find you a bit close. <laughs> I like the fact it makes the world a bit of a friendlier place. Because you've all got a conversation to have. Well, yeah, it's not a conversation, is it? You go, it's hot, and they go, yeah, it yeah. is, isn't it? That's it. See ya. <laughs> right. No, that, that's all the conversation I want with my dry cleaner. <laughs> I don't want them to go, uh, Tolstoy, do you think he's overrated? <laughs> You can't go anywhere the hot thing, does it? Doesn't it? It just goes, you're hot, yeah, hot. Yeah. You can't you can't go, no, I'm not hot. I'm a robot. Yes. Atmospheric <laughs> <laughs> conditions don't affect me. <laughs> I think robots would be more prone to the heat, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, oh, metal, metal conducts heat. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot, isn't it? <laughs> yes. You're right, you're right, actually. Yeah, I'm, I feel I'm totally so ashamed of myself. Yeah, there's probably loads of robots out there going, bloody boiling, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, is it me? <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if the weather was one of the most talked-about things this week. Oh. Yes, it was. It was the most talked-about thing in the last week. We've all been talking about how hot June is. <laughs> it's been so hot, some pensioners have even been taking off their cardies. <laughs> Dave, Sue, Paul, yeah. what have people been talking about? Well, this Wimbledon's back, isn't it? I mean, Tim Edmonds out. Thank God. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sure he's a very. Good, I'm sure he's a nice bloke. I'm sure he can play tennis and all that. But I just can't. You can't watch him for all that. Come on, Tim. <laughs> Come on, Tim. Is it some, some sort of competition going on? And, 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 and he'll get the ball and he'll pick it up. Come on, Tim. You can do it. No, he can't. No, he can't. No, he can't. <laughs> his grandfather was a tennis player. His grandmother was the first woman to serve overland at Wimbledon. What? His grandma? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Complaining about the women grunting. Oh, aren't they? Yeah. And I always say, a grunter's better than a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the grunting thing they're just going to try and ban it because they say, like, they might be trying to put people off? Because if you can listen to occasionally, they go, loser! <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like I'd like to see it go to other sports like snooker and they just go, <laughs> 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 Um, Sharapova's grunt was louder than a petrol-powered lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> if she makes that much noise hitting a tennis ball, oh. how much noise would she make if she was... I know she probably won't ever have to shift pianos, but... <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to be at the top forever. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds... I've heard lorry drivers in cubicles at service stations making less noise than that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wimbledon is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Oh, yes. It is. The poll with a hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Dave, your team first. I can't tell you the source because it will give it away. 7% of UK kids don't know what. <laughs> the correct way to compare crack. <laughs> If they eat another chocolate biscuit, they'll turn into a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> um, it, is, it is about um, food. What a carrot is. Very close. Yeah. Uh, what a carrot isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give you this one. It's 7% of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. 
What? Incredibly. 7% of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. Cover it in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. They'll get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, most kids get all the orangey goodness they need from Bacardi Breezes. <laughs> Sean Steen, uh, this is from a study by Leicester University from March this year. On average, policemen spend two minutes per day what? Playing with their Nino. <laughs> um, arguing over who's going to be bad cop. To spend two minutes per day tampering with evidence. <laughs> you know, just for old times' sake. Is it boiling a really soft egg? No, the answer is, in fact, on average, policemen spend two minutes per day taking statements. Dave, Simon and uh, Lee, this is from the Department of Health survey from last December. Southerners are five times more likely to what than Northerners? Support Manchester United. <laughs> Celebrate Pim's o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Book a flight from Gatwick. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with an emergency. Five times more likely to not have an emergency. <laughs> it wasn't that much of a clue. Call an ambulance. You're absolutely right. It is dial 999. Yeah. <laughs> My neighbour had a heart attack, right, fell on his hamster, and the RSPCA got there before the ambulance. <laughs> Sean Steam, you're next. Um, this is according to a survey by the Ramblers Association from this March. 69% of people think that encountering what would spoil their enjoyment of a country walk? Talking sheep. <laughs> Especially a really dull one. <laughs> if a sheep could talk, it'd be quite boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, just been standing here all day. Bloody boring. <laughs> well, over there yesterday. Great. <laughs> a badger the size of a horse. Yeah. <laughs> That sounded really rude, the way you said it. <laughs> oh, she had a badger the size of a horse. <laughs> I keep forgetting Richard Maley's there, and it's like a little surprise every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what would spoil a country walk? Come on, just think about it logically. A bull. The road. Oh, elect electric pylon. Yeah, you're along the right. Motorway. Cars. Well, you're absolutely right. I'll Cars. give you that. It's vehicles. Cars. What? Yeah. <laughs> Dave, um, your team, and next one's from the British Attitude Survey, December 2004. By the year 2015, half the world's population will what? Have been evicted from the Big Brother house. <laughs> will have had a go on Titmus. <laughs> I've read the Da Vinci Code. Reading the Da Vinci Code is kind of along the same lines. Well, they will be able to read the Da Vinci Code. Speaking English. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Sean, yours is the next one from a survey by Surrey University, featured in the Daily Mail in March. 17% of British women are kept awake each night by what? 17% of British men. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Maidley. <laughs> yeah, they're there tossing and yeah. turning. Yeah. <laughs> is it ecstasy? <laughs> I think it's a gentle but insistent prodding in their lower backs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's quite an obvious one. The children. Is it snoring? You are absolutely 100% right. 17% of British women are kept awake by their partner snoring. If your partner does snore, one way you can deal with it is to gently roll them over. Do it three times, they're out the bed, problem solved. <laughs> Did you know, for example, in this year's Big Brother, there were a staggering six and a half million votes cast, meaning whoever wins has a clear mandate to invade North Korea. <laughs> Of course, the title of Big Brother is taken from the George Orwell novel 1984, although this year's casting was inspired by Animal Farm. 80% <laughs> of the Big Brother applicants are between 16 and 24. The rest have significantly higher IQs. <laughs> Let's get started. The next round is called The Pole with a Hole. We've unearthed some fascinating facts about Big Brother. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Sean Steen, 10% of Big Brother viewers think that science is what? Is his uh, surname, <laughs> and his first name is Head Of. <laughs> science is history. It's his story, which is mine. What would you like to know? I think I know already now. I don't think you do. <laughs> I feel like I picked up a pirate radio station. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with your name, Science. Hmm? Is, it, is it your real name? Christened name. Yeah. 
Some See, it isn't science to you, though, please. Yeah, no, science is great, as far as I'm concerned. But, <laughs> but Kieran, Harvey, if I was the authorities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 10% of Big Brother viewers think that science is... Not his real name. Not his real name. He's close, but not right. I'm going to have to tell you. 10% of Big Brother viewers think that science is a stupid name. <laughs> Where did you get the name, then? Did you give it to yourself? No, I didn't. It came because of the way that I produce music, the way that I write lyrics and the things that I talk about, basically. The science of life, the science of culture. The science of dreams. Boom. And to aspire. <laughs> Give us a little taste of that. Uh, what shall I talk about? Give me a topic then. 8 out of 10 cats. 8 out of 10 cats. All right, and I'm having a chit chat in 8 out of 10 cats with Jimmy Carr and the rest of the gang. But you know that I'm the man. Yeah, I'm a man, man. Not a man's man, but you've got to overstand. Now, don't be hunger because I've got a hunger. And since I've been in the house, I've come out a lot stronger. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Put some minor. A little bitch in the matrix. Dave, 34% of people would like to see Derek what? Let's like see Derek, he's here, <laughs> <laughs> Press play and record. You can have a tape of him. <laughs> um, kiss Jeremy. It's got to be, <laughs> got to be that. Take the plums out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> later, Jeremy, later. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'd like you to see more of you doing? Bending with your knees rather than your back. <laughs> I've not seen anyone lifting an handling course. Every time I've watched you, you're doing the wrong thing. You're just asking for this trouble later on in life. 34% of people weren't as caring as you. Could it be something absurd as leading the Conservative Party? I'm going to give you that. 34% of people would like to see Derek start his own political party. Derek, do you think you'd be good at that? No, I, um, I'm a follower, not a leader. I follow people. They're usually tall, dark and very handsome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Derek, but I'm going to say no. <laughs> this is interesting. The Bible is the world's most shoplifted book. To be fair, how are you meant to know you shouldn't steal it before you've read it? 14% of bosses think it's acceptable for potential employees to lie on their CVs. If Channel 4 bosses are watching this, I haven't got a GCSE in French. Suckers. <laughs> <laughs> and the average marriage lasts 11 years. I imagine there are a few people at home right now thinking, yes, I'm adding two. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. Sean, your team to go first. It's anything to do with the opening uh, of the Easy Hotel. The Easy Jet guy, he's gone into hotels now. Who's it? Stelios. Stelios. And he's, he's, he's opening a, an Easy Jet Hotel. It's saying 20 quid a night to stay in London, but the rooms are bright orange. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. Um, in fact, you... they are oranges. Yeah. You have to burrow into them. <laughs> no, actually, they're not. Aren't they? <laughs> well, I'm not staying then. <laughs> He's got into hotels and he's spreading, he's spreading his empire. He's bringing the easy brands to loads of different things. And I, I'm looking forward to the easy zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I think about very sort of low rent craft, where well, everything's orange. <laughs> There's about 200 foxes and a pigeon that lives off Watsits. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that the opening of the easy hotel is not in the, uh, in the top five. Oh, you it. Dave, your team, what have the nation been talking about this week? Um, I think they've been talking about the space shuttle with bits falling off it. <laughs> I think it's, it's 25 years old. What are they doing sending that up there? I've got a 15-year-old caravanette. I wouldn't got Grange over Sands in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the thing is, have you seen the crew? Eileen, she's called. She's the commandant. She's Eileen Collins. She's more by her dresser as well, obviously. <laughs> have you seen her hair, that Eileen? It's just like, done. She thought, well, I've got to put that helmet on. So she's done her hair like that. It's just like... <laughs> Do you think she decided to be an astronaut when she was at the hairdressers in one of those <laughs> things? <laughs> <laughs> this is the look for me. I'm saying they've, they've repaired the shuttle now, but, like, if you were on a plane and you just watched the pilot shin his way out along the wing <laughs> with the hacksaw, and then he'd come in and go, oh, it's fine now, <laughs> you'd be shitting yourself. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's in the top five talking points this week. Yes, it is. Yes, this is the story of the repairs being carried out on the space shuttle this week. Discovery will soon be returning to home base. Or if they're closed, they'll be nipping into B&Q. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
all the people in China stood on each other's shoulders, they could reach the moon, which is not only an interesting fact, it's also the latest rescue plan. <laughs> Sean, Vic and Alan, what else have the nation been talking about? Is it Big Brother with Kinger coming down on a bottle? <laughs> <laughs> she did come down... I felt sorry for the bottle. I really <laughs> did. She'll not get much back on that at Threshers, will she? <laughs> <laughs> She should have done us all a favour and stuck Eugene up, shouldn't she? <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Kinga's behaviour on Big Brother was one of the top five most talked about things. <laughs> Dave? I think people have been talking about the, uh, the launch of the Space Shuttle. That's what I think, Discovery, eventually. It was cancelled early on in the month, wasn't it, because they had a problem with the fuel gauge. Isn't the captain a female? Exactly. I might have possibly nipped out to the shops and possibly not bothered to put any fuel back in there. <laughs> <laughs> might possibly have stood there with the keys going, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I went to spa. <laughs> then my mum rang, so I had to go around. She's called Eileen Collins, isn't she? <laughs> that's not the name of an astronaut. That's, that, that's your auntie Eileen, that, from across the street. <laughs> She's also 48, isn't she? That's quite near the age where ladies start to go through the change, isn't oh. it? Which might not be a good time to be in space. <laughs> uh, we enter in the Earth's atmosphere. She goes, oh, I'm burning up. No, it's just re-entry, Eileen. I'm going to put my head in the fridge. No, that's the main door, you... <laughs> it's weird how confident the scientists are, though, because they told the public when they found out there was a problem, they just wiggled a couple of wires and all the problems went away. <laughs> so what do you think? They wiggled and jiggled. They wiggled some wires, yeah. Oh, that's like, that's like switching your batteries around in your yeah. remote. Yeah, it's it? like when you... <laughs> The first one, the ill-fated one, they said a piece fell off, a form insulation, the size of a briefcase. <gasps> this time, the size of a suitcase. <laughs> that's how they measure insulation in America, that. <laughs> it's like hands for horses, that's a measurement of horses. Insulation, luggage. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the NASA mission is one of the top five most talked about things. Yeah. Yes, Ooh. it is. <laughs> right, Sean Steen, what have the nation been talking about this week? Well, one of the things that's come out this week is the hospital reports. Every hospital gets graded, don't they? they get three stars, two stars, one star. I think is they should, instead of uh, stars, they should have skulls. <laughs> uh, you get a hospital that's got one skull, it's quite good. <laughs> Five skulls, there's some nutter in there with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing better, though, are they, outside of hospitals, seeing people smoking in pyjamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then putting the ash in the top pocket. <laughs> I can tell you that Britain's uh, failing hospitals is actually the seventh most talked about thing Ooh. this week. So, Dave, what else have the nation been talking about? This parrot that keeps telling everybody to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and this, but the story is this lorry driver had this parrot, right, and then he emigrated to Australia and left it to a sanctuary. But it's been what it said in the paper, it's been watching post watershed television with him, right? Because uh, there was a, there's a tour around this uh, sanctuary, and the mayor went up to it and went, oh, parrot, and he went, fuck off. <laughs> And there was a vicar with him, and the vicar went, stop it, and he went, you can fuck off and off. <laughs> I can tell you that uh, parrots are not on the list. Um... Oh. Why not? What kind of country are we living in? <laughs> there was a time when all we discussed was parrots. <laughs> Parrot-related stories, parrot memories, oh... It's Hugging parrots at Christmas. <laughs> sure, Jane Scott. Is it the water shortages, the drought, oh. that they're saying there is a big drought? Now, Jimmy... I'm no scientist, but it's been raining all week. Where's the drought? <laughs> the thing is, we're going to have a drought and there's going to be hose pipe bans. What do you do with hose pipes, though? You just squirt each other and stuff. Or you can... Oh, oh dear. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was talking to someone, they said, what happens if you, if you get caught using your hose pipe during a hose pipe ban? You get a £1,000 fine. Mm. <gasps> and, it, and if you don't... <laughs> 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 and if you don't pay that, you can go to jail. And that's got yeah. to be the most uncool thing to be in jail for, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, for bank robbery, fraud, no, who's part? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, uh, is it global warming? Is that, is that the reason? Is it because Europe uses too much oil? Is that what? Sorry, Europe uses too much oil? Yeah. <laughs> You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's have a look and see if droughts oh, are God. on the list of top five talked about <laughs> things. <laughs> yes, Ooh. it is. Well done. Did you know, for example, 20% of people marry their first love? What, they've got Lego wives? <laughs> <laughs> Every day in Britain, six newborn babies are given to the wrong parents. 
I wasn't swapped at birth, and neither was my identical twin, Wong Chow Lee. <laughs> <laughs> the reason half of all relationships break up is bad sex. My relationship broke up because of good sex with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. Sean, your team to go first. Well, I think they've almost definitely been talking about the release of the new Harry Potter novel. Uh, sold something like 10 million copies in an hour, and it's, it's not just kids that read it, it's adults. I saw a bloke on the train reading it the other day, and I did think to myself, I thought, well, I wonder if when he goes home, right, for his tea, he has alphabetic spaghetti. <laughs> and, like, dinosaur-shaped chicken bites. <laughs> and if he sees a woman in the pub, he fancies, he just runs over and punches her in the arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. You've read it? Read it? Yeah. yeah. It's, very, it's very good. Is it? Yeah. It's very exciting. It is a kid's book, but it yeah. makes it very easy to read. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't read any. And people say to me, they say, say like, what, you haven't read it? Like, I'm the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit about wizards. Oh, <laughs> if I see the word wizard on a page, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> Just a natural reaction. But you clap. <laughs> Oh, I love wizards. <laughs> you know, they, they, they do that thing as well, the Harry Potter. They bring out, the, they have the cover for the kids' version, and then they have an adult cover as well, so you don't feel embarrassed reading. But it still says big letters, Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the reason I haven't read it is I haven't finished all the Mr Men books yet, and I don't, <laughs> I don't feel I'm ready to make that leap. You know, that <laughs> I think it was £4.99 in quicksave. Four pounds ninety-nine. In quicksave? Oh, yeah. In quicksave. It's where I buy all my literature. <laughs> <laughs> How much are they knocking Tolstoy out at these days? <laughs> well, it's obviously a lost leader's gonna spend a fortune in quicksave while you're Spend you a fortune exactly. in quicksave. <laughs> <Not to literature. laughs> you can do a trolley dash and get change for a tenner. <laughs> Sarah Vini, do you read these books? I actually listen to them on, on tape. You're too yeah. lazy to even read yeah. Harry Potter, which is for kids. That we listen lazy. to your advice every week about houses. You haven't got a clue how to live, for God's sake. Actually, that is true. I should be ashamed, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. they're true. better on tape, cos Stephen Fry reads them. Yes. Yeah, and also you can switch them off and chuck them out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Harry Potter was one of the most talked about things this week. Oh. Yes, it was. Well done. Yes, the second most talked about thing this week was the story of the launch of the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I've not read it, but presumably the Half-Blood Prince is Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, over to you right. and your team. What have the nation been talking about this week? I, th I think it's possibly Sienna leaving Jude. I think oh, that, that's yes. upset us all, yeah, really, yeah. hasn't it? You know, desperate, it's got the ideal perfect couple, and he's been cheating with a nanny. She's kept a diary, because nannies do that, don't they? And, said, uh, <laughs> and, and we, we made love on the pool table. Um, the balls were everywhere. <laughs> well done, Jude. I thought the interesting was that, was that, obviously, he's had sex with his nanny, which means uh, he's a classy guy. <laughs> I reckon the safe money is that her, the next nanny will be called Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he said she was so good, you know, we were going to recommend her to the Beckhams. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Jude and his nanny are one of the most popular talking points this week. Oh, yes, yes, they are. One eye. One eye. Yeah, man. 13% of Americans are afraid of what? Their own shadow. Because <laughs> it'll be massive, <laughs> won't it? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, what's... Oh, it's me. <laughs> have you been to America? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you like it? No. Uh. <laughs> But, no, it, I think Americans are really afraid of, uh... If you can't say it, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> is it making love to a woman, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it? No. You know... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have, uh, you know, I've been with a woman. Yeah, just... well, I've done loads of blokes. Oh, hang on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're trying to say is that 13% um, of Americans are afraid of Bush. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're afraid of going for a walk. <laughs> well, they don't they drive everywhere. The only time you see an American out of his car is he's chasing a donut going down a hill. That's <laughs> you know, this is feeling very anti-American to me, this whole part of Look, this. Scott, yeah. I have Scott. something to say. Scott, yeah. Think of it as friendly fire. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You were close with Bush, you were close with going for a walk. Going for a walk with the president. <laughs> the answer is 13% of Americans are afraid of being alone in a forest. 
<laughs> the other 87% are happily holed up in a log cabin with an M16 waiting for the federal government to fall. <laughs> OK. Only 7% of builders regularly what? Pull the pants up. <laughs> Only 7% of builders regularly shout, Oi, darling, I'd like to get to know you as a person. To you. <laughs> I say, stuff me, I've finished a week early, I'll give you two grand back. <laughs> Is it fall off ladders? Because they're thick as shit, aren't they? Sorry. <laughs> no, there should be a sign at the top of a ladder that says stop. <laughs> it's... it's kind of refreshment related. Come back from lunch. Turn up sober. <laughs> Only 7% of builders regularly take tea breaks. Oh, Most prefer true. to add all their tea breaks together and turn up two weeks late. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a police review magazine survey from May 2005. 80% of British police want a what? Slap. <laughs> I don't know. A uh, friend? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know anybody who's got a friend who's a policeman. I've got an undercover friend. A, um, a friend who's an undercover policeman. Who is he? Well, he, he was. <laughs> What's he called? I can't say it, cos No, no, what's he called? He's undercover. No, no, but tell, tell us his name. Compton. Compton. Mr Compton. <laughs> what's it, where, where about no, that's his other? first name. He's really cool as well. I shouldn't talk too much about him, cos he's He's called doing... Compton? Yeah, yeah, Compton. Cos he's now kicking the telly, going... <laughs> <laughs> he's he's really in a cool crack den. Well. He's in a <laughs> crack <laughs> den. They're watching this, and he's going... What then they go, you're Compton. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't! Did <Don't> you? <laughs> no, I actually got a picture of him here. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I've suddenly remembered. I've got a relation who's a copper, but he's he's a mounted copper. In oh. Canada. In really? oh, yes. I think a, I know him. He's a he's a he's a mounted. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got that. <laughs> okay, eight, eighty percent of British police want a what? They want a bigger truncheon. <laughs> so what, you're a, a, gun. Lines. A, a gun. A gun. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's a stun gun. Is it? Yeah. OK, 62% of British men don't know their partner's what? A man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they don't know their partner's eye colour. That's a hard one to remember. I'm just trying to remember if my girlfriend's got eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine no. <laughs> <laughs> Pin number. No, I'll give you a clue. It's, yeah, pin number, you're very close. Partners. Phone number. Mobile phone number. Correct. Oh, oh damn. Yes, yeah, 62% of British men don't know their partner's mobile telephone number. I don't need to know my girlfriend's <laughs> mobile number. She rings me every six minutes. <laughs> yes, I still love you. Blind <laughs> <laughs> The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Question number one. This is from a survey by Mother and Baby magazine from June 2005. 50% of British dads are what? Counting the days till the kids leave home. <laughs> <laughs> are your kids going to be watching this? <laughs> 50% of British dads are crap at putting shelves up. <laughs> As I am. Just all put. My wife said, put some shelves up, and I went, no, you want them straight and everything. I know you're. I... <laughs> I'm not proud of this. I went to the library to get a DIY boot, and I said to the one behind the counter, I said, have you got any boots on shelves? She went. <laughs> Uh, 50% of dads are suing Jurex. <laughs> Not necessarily Jurex, it could be any of the rubber Johnny manufacturers. <laughs> there's, a new, there's a new promotion for it. I don't know if you've seen it in the chemist at the moment. It's a brand new promotion. It's uh, for condoms and it says, no, new shape. What new shape? <laughs> <laughs> is that who works at Sellafield? <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's something to do with uh, having babies. Tired, sleepy. <laughs> Claudia, you said sleepy. Sleep, tired, exhausted. I'm going to give you a point. It is in fact, 50% of British dads are sleep deprived. <laughs> well, they have to wake up three times a night to tell their wives it's crying again. <laughs> Sean's team, uh, this is from research carried out by the Department of Psychology at the University of Texas from June this year. 
men consistently find women with what the most attractive? Is it Rod Stewart? <laughs> <laughs> He's often got a charming young lady on his arm. <laughs> Big kids, low self-esteem. <laughs> Is it GPS? <laughs> Global satellite yeah. positioning. Um, is it with a naked twin sister? That would get a thumbs up, wouldn't it? So yeah, certainly would. A thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know what it might be? Go on. I don't a think degree. A degree? Yeah. Oh, so naive. <laughs> <laughs> no teeth. <laughs> no, men consistently find women with a weight to height ratio of between 0.68 and 0.8 the most attractive. I was going to say that. <laughs> that roughly translates as not the stocky ones. <laughs> Dave, Eamon and Lee. Uh, this next one is from a poll by the Health Development Agency from January this year. 60% of drivers think what is a good idea? Oh, uh, those chevrons on the motorway. Have you seen those? It's a road safety thing. You've got to keep two chevrons from the car in front. Yeah. And I, it's, not, it's nightmare. It's wrong. Why? I nearly killed myself trying to keep up with a Porsche last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's going 150 and I'm like, this can't be right, this can't be safe. <laughs> Is it 60% of drivers think that driving with your knees whilst eating against us pasty? <laughs> <laughs> the only way to do it. <laughs> One underneath, want a cup for the small bits of potato. <laughs> I'm not wasting that, I'd rather risk my life. <laughs> is it... No. Is it... Is it, is it uh, playing lullabies and having a pillow? <laughs> is it driving past the little chef? <laughs> <laughs> Is it 60% of drivers think uh, that kids doing that thumbs up thing is okay? Because it gets right on my bloody nerve. When well, you're driving behind a car and kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, I go like that. <laughs> Show your mum. <laughs> okay, I can tell you it's something that um, it's something that you would expect drivers not to like. Speed cameras. Eamon, you're brilliant, you got it. <laughs> that doesn't did you know, for example, 20% of Manchester's inner-city school kids have witnessed a violent crime? 80% ain't saying nothing till they've seen their brief. <laughs> One third of husbands would let their wives sleep with another man for a million pounds. A million pounds? For half that, I'll put on a wig and do it myself. 13% <laughs> of Americans believe some parts of the moon are actually made of cheese. If you think that's scary, you don't want to know what President Bush thinks about the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> this is from a survey featured in Women's Own from May of this year. 93% of people who what are overweight. Watch Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been watching the show? Oh, I've been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm a massive... I'll tell you, I do every day, me. I, that's my favourite. Pregnant with twins, only shared my brother's towel. That was my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 93% nice of people who uh, have a trough at home? In the <laughs> Is it 93% uh, of people who eat but don't poo? <laughs> Is it 93% uh -huh. of people who appear on the Ocean Finance adverts? Are all the way? <laughs> Have you seen that woman? <laughs> there's large, there's extra large, and there's, oh, my God, it's coming towards us. <laughs> <laughs> we had a guy on our show who was, uh, I think they call him a chubby chaser. He liked really, really huge women. A chubby chaser? Yeah. I've always had issues with that. How much chasing is actually going on? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much gotcha. <laughs> that there are a lot of overweight people who are that way because they have personal problems in their life. Oh, stop eating your <laughs> Is it who watch too much television? Who watch... I'll give you that, yes. 93% of people who watch more than two and a half hours no. of TV a day are overweight. No. OK, next one. 65% of circus performers are what? I think 65% of circus performers are covered in pie. <laughs> <laughs> and wearing the wrong shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I went to a circus in, uh, in East London and, uh, about two years ago. It's quite funny. And one of the clowns forgot to turn his mobile off. <laughs> uh, and it went off. It took him ages to find it because it got those massive pockets. <laughs> <laughs> he reached around. And the thing is, the tune on his mobile was... <laughs> and he's reaching out and he got his mobile over, switched off. And the amazing thing was the way the other clowns re reacted. They went mental at him. Right? They started pouring water down his trousers. <laughs> they hit him with a ladder. <laughs> they really overreacted. Rather put a barrel over him and pushed him over. <laughs> Total overreaction. Sixty-five percent of circus performers are not to be trusted. <laughs> it's like bad happened to you at circus one. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I've got a little puppet. Would you tell him? <laughs> so you look more like a puppet, don't you? <laughs> You look a bit like a ventriloquist dummy, don't you? It's the hair, really, that gives it away. <laughs> it's so neat and tidy, it's unnatural. So, 65% of circus performers are, my hair looks like a dummy. <laughs> That's you get. Is it animals? <laughs> oh, that's not, not no, 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 that is serious. a good suggestion. I'm sorry, I'm giving hey, you credit there. Sister! That is a good suggestion. <laughs> It's a good guess, it's isn't it? Up, it's come up with a bloody good guess. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. Really they're animals, yeah. so they're yeah. not really very bad. entertaining, generally. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> clue is, it, it's a survey done by the Catholic Herald. Catholic! Catholic! Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 65% of circus performers are Catholic. If you are a three-foot-tall clown married to a bearded lady living in a caravan, I'm not sure the prayers are working. <laughs> Did you know, for example, one in 20 people think that Conan the Barbarian is a real character? <laughs> Does Professor Dumbledore not teach them anything? <laughs> one in 10 women in the UK has a sexually transmitted disease. I like those odds. <laughs> and one in five drivers don't understand road signs. This means you've cut me up. <laughs> Let's get started. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Here's your first question. This is from an age concern study from January. 50% of the over 65s don't have a what? Is it that 50% of over 65s don't have a real hip? <laughs> <laughs> Is it 50% is it of over 65s don't have a clue why they went to the cupboard in the first place? <laughs> is it 50% of over 65s don't have a chance against a panther? <laughs> <laughs> is it 50% of over 65s don't have a waist? <laughs> As they get older, and all men especially, the waist just get higher and higher and the belt gets the pants just get higher. 103, belt there, zip there. Uh, hello, 103. <laughs> And the only people I know, old people, they have trays over the bath. So they can organise the loofah and the soap and it's all there. <laughs> and then they need an emergency. There it is. People still use loofahs. That's yeah. great, isn't it? That's an over 65 thing, a loofah, isn't it? Well, no, it's not. It cleans your back. <laughs> I know, it's, it's a young man's thing, I would have thought. Yeah, the loofah, right. surely, isn't it? Oh, yeah, no. it's a young man's thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of the kids watching will be thinking, yeah, loofahs, yeah. <laughs> what is a loofah? It's a loofah. Do you want to know? That's a bloody funny I, name. I know, because the worst Christmas present I ever got was, a uh, was a grow your own loofah kit. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that, that is quite it. bad, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> Whereabouts do loofahs live in the wild then? Underwater. <laughs> no, they don't, they're, they're growing trees. <laughs> is it like a sea cucumber when it's, when it's alive? No, it, it, it alive. grows on land. It grows on land. It's a, it's a, it's a vegetable. And surely it's like a sponge and grows underwater, isn't no, it? No, no. That's what I, I thought. I disagree it was. with you. Yeah, but you don't know f***ing everything, do you? Well. <laughs> I think this should be a good special on loofahs then, if yeah. that's the case. So, that's, that's, <laughs> loofahs grow on trees, they're like a, a good. They're like a good. A good? What's yeah. a good? I can't believe I'm working with these botanical <laughs> ignoramuses. <laughs> I've never seen a loofah tree. If there were loofah trees. Well, of course you don't, you haven't seen Well, because they you... don't exist, that's why. <laughs> if there were loofah trees, we'd know about them. They sound brilliant. Yeah. The reason you haven't seen one is because old people have taken them. <laughs> oh! I'll, I'll give you a clue, it's sort of about companionship. Is that a partner? Is it a best friend? Best friend is the right answer. Oh. This is from a survey featured in the Daily Mail, March 2005. 86% of bosses feel that what is a disadvantage in business? Is it 86% uh, of bosses feel that 
speaking in riddles is a disadvantage in business. <laughs> my first is in piano, but not in canoe. Would you like to invest in my shipping company, Jimmy? <laughs> yes, yes, I would. <laughs> it, is in, it is in canoe, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can give you a clue. Go on, then. Go on, then. It's, uh, are you sort of along the right lines when you said it was about how people speak? Is it uh, having a, a working-class voice? That's exactly the right answer. Oh! oh. <laughs> yes, 86% of bosses feel that a working-class accent is a disadvantage in business. I've done all right. Strike a light. 